a lot of my mastering content. It's just sort of like behind the scenes, people who know, know, um, and they sort of spread it out there. Wow. That's amazing. That's uh, like, that's probably more mixes than I did this past year. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It's, um, it's, it's interesting and it's good fun. It's good fun. Nice. So Nick, you reached out to me and you said, Hey Ben, when can I get back on the podcast? And I said, soon. And then I waited a while and then I started having, you know, repeat guests and it's a whole new, you know, a whole new topic, which we were kind of talking about before we got and jumped on the air. It's a completely different conversation as I'm sure people are hearing now, you know, the first episode, I kind of introduced people, I learned about their story and, you know, we talk about their methods and how they work. And this is kind of more of like a casual catch up and we kind of go deeper into what people are about. But in, so what was the reasoning behind that, you know, that question is like, hey, Ben, I want to get back on your podcast. I was like, okay, whoa, cool. Uh, what were you thinking? Well, the thing was, it's, I'll be honest, and this is a credit to you, is that it's a pillar of the community. That. In a sense that, no, 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 I, I mean it in an honest sense where um, the guests look forward to being guests and the people listening to it look forward to hearing from the, looking to hearing from the guests. And I know you've asked that, that question and it's it's not for me to be, for you to be self-serving. I'm not trying to say this so that way I oh, will we'll blow up we'll, we'll blow up Ben's ego and, and uh, make him feel good about it. But um no, I think there's a genuine conversation and story to be had on each episode. And I'm like, well, you know what, we we spoke last year and that was great. And I've enjoyed hearing, you know, some of my other colleagues come on who who I recommended to you. And I think there's a lot of value in community. And I think that's missed a lot in the audio world because the, the sort of community that's in the audio world is either behind the scenes away from the internet people are really close there's great camaraderie there's good teamwork happening then on the internet it's like a bit of it, it, it can be a bit dicey like you know pe- people can get at each other's throats in forums yeah. and and you know bandwagons certain things and I know. I just feel like this is a good mutual space for audio engineers and producers to sort of say their piece and connect with ideas. And I feel like that, you know, since, since I came on, I've went through a lot at the studio in terms of growing and what's happening in my world that I was like, you know what, it, 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 it's, I'm not, I'm not hitting up Ben because there's going to, we're just going to talk shit. Like there'll be something there for other people to learn from and connect with. And, you know, that's, that that's a main reason. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Uh, I'm honored that you, you would say that, you know, uh, I, I have to say that like, you know, we keep talking about content on, even on this episode, you know, we're talking about making content and blah, blah, blah. And th- the truth is that's why I started this podcast. Like I need to start to do something content wise. And like audio seems like the, the move for me, but for me, the podcast has been, really been about making relationships, you know, forming relationships with other audio engineers, building my own little community of like people that I've actually met on Zoom and maybe hopefully one day in real life at a NAM or something. Uh, and, and and just like, just, I don't know, it's, it, that's been the coolest thing. It's just like, like you said, the community also for like, just on a personal level and just, just meeting people. And um, that's not what I thought was going to happen going in. Like I thought like, okay, I'm going to make this amazing podcast. I have this, this plan, blah, blah, blah the podcast completely morphed into its own thing. It, it was never going to be how I envisioned it like on day one, which is like, you know, uh, a point for why people should just release music and then just keep releasing music and not just like wait for that perfect song. Cause it never is going to happen. But, but like, you know, it morphed into its own thing, but, but by far and away, the best thing for me has been meeting people. Um, so I'm happy you said that. And uh, wait, so, so tell me a bit about what you've, how you've grown since our last uh, conversation on this podcast. Yeah, well, I, I think we spoke about it briefly at the start where, where I'm talking about my, my, my calendar getting a little bit more relaxed, but also um, just in my business-wise, the, the where I'm focusing, like before I was, I was in a growth stage where I'm focusing on, oh, how can I grow my thing bigger and bigger and bigger? Um, because I love doing what I do. I love connecting. The, the more projects I work on, the, the more fulfilling I feel because... I, I feel because, you know, hey, that's like... Their tickets are validation whenever a client comes to the table. It's like... Hey, I like you enough to work on my record. I've I value enough. Oh wow, that that feels good. So it, it was about growing that back then. Now it's more about just enjoying that process rather than focusing so hard on, oh, I need to I need to cram X amount of leads or this many projects or do this many sessions. It's it's more about how can I enjoy that process as much as possible. And I'm sort of in that luxury state where I can kick back, 
enjoy the process of working with the clients I'm working with and just trying to navigate um, the joy in the job. Because I think, I'll be honest, sometimes that can be lost in the hustle. It's like, oh, of you, course. You, can feel real, you feel really shitty um, trying to navigate how to make your business work. And then you sort of forget where the love is in, in your actual work itself. And, and you know, it's actually funny. There was a meme yeah. going around. I think you saw the meme that I oh, read yeah, yeah. today <laughs> and, and it really pissed me off. So it was, it was this like $50 client first $5,000 client and people are sort of framing the $50 client as an annoying naggy, you know, oh, I need this louder, that louder, my, my best friend's girlfriend's producer, blah, 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 whatever the fuck it is. We just told um, you to raise the base, but now we're actually telling you to, to put it back yeah. down where it was, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that sort of got me shitty because it was like, that's, that's not like we had, when we started out as audio engineers or when we started out in this world, in the production world, learning a door, trying to figure out our own stuff, those were the questions and debates we were having with ourselves internally it's like oh shit you'd listen to the mix and you'd be like i want to bring this up bring this down bring this and it's like so then as audience engineers why do we have to be so negative towards our clients who do that so it's like i don't know i just feel like a, a good positive mindset and frame I, i've been able to sort of step into over the last 12 plus months because i've had that luxury of having the work coming in and i can just take a step back from trying to focus too much on the hustle and just be like how can i make this process enjoyable for myself for my clients and just regardless if a client has a million revisions or not how can we make it a positive experience that everybody feels constructive and happy about and i think that's um that's that's lost a little bit and 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 i'm going to give credit to i'm not sure if you've had them on the podcast but craig brower i think the name so, sounds familiar yeah, it should sound familiar. He, he's, uh, and I'll get you in contact with him to have him on the podcast if you want. Um, okay. Mixing engineer for people like Kanye and stuff like that. He, he's a really top tier mixer. And, you know, he's really open about his philosophy and he's like, well, everything and anything it takes to to get a record across the line for a client. Yeah. And to me, it's like, that that's really nice and, and kind and humbling to be putting out there into the world, especially in the audio community, where um, a lot of people sort of paint themselves as like, you know, super magicians that are like, oh, I do this, this, that, and it makes the record sound fucking awesome. That's how easy it is, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, sometimes, you know, you have to put in the hard yakka. You have to, you have to really knuckle down for your clients, even at the highest tier. So um, you know, I just 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 trying to remember that love. And I remix that meme to say, well, if you can't satisfy a fifty dollar client that's causing you a headache, you're never going to satisfy a five thousand dollar client. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I definitely think there's truth in both. Because, you know, you know, somebody has obviously had like the cheaper clients and has had some, you know, people that are more happy to pay. It's uh it's a completely different uh it can be a completely different ball game. But I'm all about that though. I'm all about giving service and uh and helping and helping the artist and almost to a fault, I would say, because I'm I, I want I'm I want those mixed notes. I want the revisions because they're gonna be much happier when you know I do those revisions, and it's gonna—it's their song. They have to live with it forever. It's not my song. Once I'm done with this mix, it's out of my life. Uh, you know, not fully. You know, I'll revisit. I'm sure at some point, but but it's—they're gonna to have to live with it f for real for a very long time. Uh, but I, I think I'm almost at to a fault with this stuff because I, I'm so I'm such a people pleaser. You know, I, I, I almost do it at my own expense of being a people pleaser. You know what I mean? Like, the, you know, I, I'll work too hard and like not, eat, not and lose perspective of like how important this thing is, you know, in relationship to, to other things in my life, which are maybe more important, like my, you know, whatever family, you know, anxiety levels, whatever it is, you know. So I, fe I feel like you have to find a balance also for yourself where you're not, I don't know, dying from giving your clients too much. You know what I mean? Like you do have to set those boundaries as well. Yeah. I agree with that. And and boundaries will shift and change as yeah. the day progresses, as the week progresses, as the year progresses, as things happen in Different your life seasons, change. for sure. If like, because like, I'll give an example. And you know what? I, I think I'm happy to make this example because it made me question myself yesterday. Um, so a project came in. So there's a producer I've been working with. I can't say names, but um, uh, a producer I've been working with for a long time. They're signed to a major publisher. And... He on all his projects outside of the publishing company, he works with me. Excuse me, because he like not a greatest fan of the mastering engineers that the publisher uses, and they had mastering booked in for yesterday that fell through. And he's like, the label wants to needs mastering. I put your name forward. Can you get it done in twenty four hours? Big artist. So for me, I'm like, yep, yeah, let's do it. Um, and that boundary was shifted straight away from me then and there. And 
that was cool because we've got the project done yesterday. Everybody's happy about it. That's great. That's my foot in the door with, with that publisher, with the client's label, with their management, everything. That's awesome. And then at night I got home and I'm thinking, what have I done that for an independent artist, somebody who like didn't present that opportunity? And the horrible reality was at that time I said to myself, no, I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't have went out of the box with that. And, and that, that's not a good thing. That's 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 me having a bit of um, you know, self-reflection to say, well, that that doesn't really hold true to the values I like in my business. One of the values I like is the fact that I don't care whether somebody's an independent artist getting a right. hundred streams or a major artist, like I've got clients that one one client early this year already got 50 million streams on a single they released. Wow. Um so and and I respect both the same, or I like to say I do, but in that circumstance, I didn't. So in terms of boundaries and the way you respect your time, and it made me question myself a lot and 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 think about, you know, how will I approach a situation next time? Um, let's say an independent artist does come up to me and say that, you know, for, for a personal integrity point of view, I think that's that's really important. We reflect on those things wow. because hey, that's that's yeah. a self criticism of myself. I'm 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 happy to be that vulnerable and say, hey, I don't necessarily think that shows me in the best light, but it's something that I had to think about, and it's a real experience I had. And I feel like, wow. especially for people in the audio community, mm -hmm. it's 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 important we recognize those things because it's easy for me to sort of sit on a pedestal and say, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't de denigrate you know fifty dollar mixes and people who send you notes, you know that's that's fucking like and put myself on a pedestal and say that. But in the same respect, I I I, I do have internal battles where I have to think about you know where are my boundaries, H how do I respect my clients? Um, it's not that I ever m m maliciously go out to to disrespect them. It's that I had a a moment where I had to look at myself and go, wow, well, you know, what have I done that for somebody I didn't know with 10 followers on Instagram who just wanted their job, their, their song done. And, um, at that point in time, I looked at myself and I had, it's, it's a self-reflection thing that I'm going through at the moment because, um, I wasn't too happy with my answer. Yeah. I, I think also it's, 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 you know, the, the, the glass is not clean, you know, see-through it's tint, it's till it's tinted because you, you look at this as an opportunity also just to, you know, to further your career and to work with higher level people, which will help you in many different respects. So it's, you know, you can prioritize an indie artist a lot, but if a career changing opportunity comes, you're still going to give it a harder push maybe because you think like, I, I'm willing to go out of my comfort zone a bit more now because this is going to make my life easier, better down the line. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. You know, an interesting point that I, I, I already mentioned this guy, Travis Ferrans, who has a podcast called Progressions. You should go check it out. Um, yep. And he, um, you know, he told me, like, hey, you know, a lot of people think that I'm getting work from my Imagine Dragons, you know, Grammy nom, and I'm really not. I'm getting my my work from this, like, indie artist, Lo Fang, who I worked with a decade ago, and people are obsessed with their music. Because people that are, like, into, you know, pop music, you know, the, the audience is really fans. It's not necessarily musicians. But if you do, it, like, a record that musicians love, like, even if it's not as chart-topping, but, like, it's a record that people are really into, like that has helped spur more work for me. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because I was kind of saying like, oh, you, this must have, you know, that must have been the reason why like, you know, your mixing, you know, took off. And he's like, no, it's like, it's because I did this stuff that people actually cared about a lot. And it has nothing to do with the chart toppingness and, you know, Grammy noms or anything like that. I was like, shit. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it's interesting Schooled, what, you know? Yeah, but, it, and, and, it, and it goes to show the conversations we have in our head and, what we think is like our, right. our internalized reality. Like, oh, okay. You know, if, if I do this mix for X, Y, Z, blah, 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 um, down the line, that's, that's going to mean, you know, be stacked with all this work because of that record. And then reality happens and it's like, it's not that one, it's something else. And, and I think, and I think there's a little bit of resonance I have with, 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 with that story you just said there about Travis, because um, a lot of the word of mouth, a lot of the referrals aren't, people who are listening to the records that I work on, it's other people who worked on the records. So the other songwriters, the other producers, the other recording engineers, the other studios it was done at, they'll all be like, oh, cool. Nick mastered this. We'd love the work on it. If you've seen the every Friday I post all my releases, um, you'll see a lot of the records I work on have teams of people on them. 
you know, they're, they're a handful of like one artist, one producers, but 